Welcome back. Now, this is interesting. In our uh, book feature this morning, we take a look at Abigail Munyai's book title From the View of a Preacher's Kid. In this book, Abigail shares intimate details of her story and lets the reader see and experience raw truths about the daily traumas that we as individuals face daily. She touches on topics such as being an orphan, being homeless and poor, lacking financing uh, for school, having a child out of wedlock, paying for her own dowry to get married, facing emotional and physical abuse going through divorce facing judgment and condemnation to only mention a few of those issues Abigail Munyai who is a published author motivational speaker and counselor and minister joins us now this morning for a deeper conversation about this offering good morning welcome to morning live good morning thank you so much for having me good thank you I mean do you get the same reaction that <laughs> I did I mean the first thing I saw the preacher's kit and yes <laughs> the first thing I think okay yes we all have that view yeah. of what preacher's kids should be like yes. I mean what's the inspiration behind this book well the inspiration is you know my life has been truly difficult mm -hmm. and I just felt that I need to share the experiences I've went through and also help people along the way um, I'm all about you know mental wellness I'm all about helping people to grow I'm all about uplifting people you know I'm just all about change yeah <laughs> you share some of the experiences in the book I mean Tell us a little bit about those experiences. Oh, well, there's a lot. <laughs> One. <laughs> well, you know what? The biggest of all is I'm an orphan, mm -hmm. and that really affects everything in your life. Mm. Um, you know, you learn to understand that uh, the presence of your parents in your life really affects everything because not having parents, I feel, has really brought me to where I am today. Um, I'm an orphan, and that applies to my marriages, that applies to my friendships, that applies to my career, that applies to everything because they are your number one support system and without them what else do you have yeah what are some of the what has been the reaction to the book the reaction has been very good. Mm -hmm. I think because a lot of people have been through what I've been through and a lot of people are not able to voice what they've been through. Uh, but through my experiences, they get to deal with past traumas and also to learn how to, you know, to progress, how to grow. I mean, who pays for their own dowry to get mm -hmm. married, right? Uh, who, yeah. who, who does that? And who goes through a divorce all by themselves? And who tries to find love again after that? Yeah. You know, and a lot of people are looking for hope and I think the book is a beacon of hope. Another thing that you touch on as well at, right at the beginning is the passing of your father. Mm. I mean, take us through how that sets the tone for the book as well. Uh, my father played a very, very, very instrumental role to who I am today. He believed in me and he could see the artist in me um, from a very young age. He always said to me, you're going to be big. And, you know, him passing away, it took away my pillar of support, my pillar of strength. Um, and I was very young when he passed away and I didn't understand. You know, as a Christian and born into a Christian family, you are taught that there's a recipe that you need to follow to get a specific outcome. Mm. You pray and you trust God, right? Right, and it should work. I did that mm -hmm. and it didn't work. Yeah. And that stirred an anger towards this God, a resentment to say, but you didn't do what you said you would do. Now, where does that leave me? Yeah. And um, I questioned the very foundation of my entire being, yeah. which is Christianity. Now, what else is there that I know outside of that? Being born into that, I don't know anything outside of that. And now I have to search deeper within myself to try and find, but what else is there yeah you know and just to take the reader through that because a lot of people can relate to being on either side of the coin yeah but what for you specifically said okay come back a little bit because you do feel a bit lost you know without your faith you're all over the place you're almost you know everywhere Wait, what for you said okay come back um, I, you know what, your calling finds you. Mm. You cannot escape who you are. Yeah. Your destiny has you where it needs you to be. And as much as I said to God, I'm parking my faith and I'm going out to the world. I'm yeah. going to drink, I'm going to party, I'm going to do whatever I feel yeah. like doing. No restrictions anymore. I've tried your way and your way doesn't work. Mm. And, you know, having tried to explore everything else, you find that perhaps the grass isn't greener mm. on the other side. And perhaps you need to learn to water your own garden. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's what brought me back. And you know what? The one thing that stood out for me was that God's love is true and it reaches to every corner of the earth. There's nothing that can separate you from his love. Yeah. Let's talk about the, uh, being a preacher's kid and the expectations that come with, with that and being in the community expects that. Where do you think that expectation stems from? 
oh, the expectations are high. Yes. They expect us to be holier than thou, yeah. and it is impossible. And you find that a lot of us are the most rebellious. Yes. <laughs> it's given. <laughs> but that's because we are expected to be mirrors that reflect our parents or their beliefs. Just because I'm born in a preacher's kid doesn't necessarily mean I myself believe in the same faith, want to lead the same type of lifestyle. And, you know, the community judges us. When I got pregnant out of wedlock, wow, the pressure was immense. Yeah. Everyone was like, oh, you're disgracing your parents. And then they pressurized me into getting married. That's why I ended up paying my own bride price. Because everybody was saying, I'm dragging my parents' name in the mud. I'm the black sheep of the family. And so I had to do something that picks me up. Mm. And I tried to correct a mistake by another mistake. Yes. And society and the community at large, they place high expectations on us that are not realistic. And I mean, no one can live up to those standards at any point in their lives. And as a result, I am that voice of reason yeah. to sort of draw, I mean, to guide people to understand where are we coming from? What is our viewpoint on all things life? Yeah. And how important was it for you to forgive yourself mm. for you to get here? Very important. Um, it's so much easier to talk about forgiveness when it's external. But when it's for you and within you, you need to search deeper and you, 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 you unravel many layers of yourself that you never even knew existed. And you cannot help anyone else. You cannot love anyone else. You cannot forgive anyone else as long as you have not done that for yourself. And that was important for me. What would you say, you know, writing this book, laying the story bare, provided you with some form of, you know, lessons as well? A lot of lessons. Mm. I learned patience. I learned perseverance. I learned so much just by trying to get this offering out there. And um, just sharing my own life stories forced me to relive them and to deal with things that I thought I had dealt with, but only actually packed away in the closet. So it really, really helped me to unpack on a lot of things yeah. and helped me to find who I really am because I'm not the same person I was back then. And why do, we, do you think we allow society to put so much pressure on us? These are the same people that you know, that are not there when you need them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And these are people that don't pay your bills. You know, <laughs> that don't know the stress that you go through. But yet we do it. We yes. allow society to dictate what we should be like. I don't think it's allowing per se. Mm. I think it's more of um, ourselves not knowing who we really are and setting boundaries as we should. Um, and if we can learn to create that wall and that barrier and to clearly define it and say, you cannot pass this area. You're not allowed to pass here. Mm. And make it known that you can smile with me, you can talk with me, you can give me your opinions and your advice, but only until a certain point. Yeah. And that's what we need to learn to do. What chapter of your life is this, the one that we're sitting, talking right now, having this conversation? What do you call it? A new era. Yeah. A total new era. I'm a new person with a new outlook on life, with new desires, new passions, much, much stronger than the younger Abigail. And you ended up being a minister too. Hey, <laughs> came with a package. <laughs> truly what came, for you yeah. are some of the biggest lessons that have come from this entire thing? You know, you look at what you've been through, you know, all these lessons somehow sum up to something. Yeah. You know, what do you call that? I would call that a revelation. Mm -hmm. A revelation to say that don't accept someone else's opinion no matter how much you value them or how much you look up to them always find your own truth and stick to what you truly believe don't let anyone tell you what you can be don't let anyone tell you who you can be or what you can do no one can define you mm. allow the potter to shape you as the clay yeah. and you will see yourself become the best version of yourself. Yeah, and this is edition one. There's seven other editions. Tell it's us a little seven. bit about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'd, I've been through so much I couldn't fit it into one of book. Of course. And I wanted everyone to be able to grow with me as I grow. So when I started writing this one, I was basically 12, turning 13. And so I didn't change anything. I wanted the reader to see me mature through my writing right. and through my outlook on life. So even now now as I'm growing, still learning, still improving, still changing outlooks every now and then, um, I still continue to include the reader on that as I go through. And seven, of course, is the number of completions, yeah. so I couldn't stop anyway before that. Um, so it's going to be people growing and 
getting to see what God does in my life. Yeah. I believe that um, you overcome by the power of your testimony. And so all the experiences I go through, I don't believe are just for me, but they will impact and change the nations, mm -hmm. the world at large. All right. Thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, good you. luck with the series. <laughs> uh, Abigail Munyai is a published author, motivational speaker, and a counselor. And she was talking to us about uh, her book. All right.